Hey everyone, welcome to Birth Podcast. I'm Ash. I want to take you to Florence, Italy and introduce you to Antonella Bundu. She sits on the city council and she's a fiery activist. She ran for mayor last year and while she didn't win the seat for mayor, her party did very well. She's fighting for immigration rights, for black lives, and for women. She has a strong argument about the cultural revolution that needs to take place, the representation desperately needed in Italy. She is one of those voices that is trying to raise the stakes and challenge the powers who think they are to think differently, to do better, to be better for the sake of the next generation. Listen in to our conversation as she explains her story and what she's passionate about. I was born in Florence to a Sierra Leonean father and an Italian mother. And uh, then we moved over to Sierra Leone when I was really young. I was only three years old. And from then on, it was like a year in Sierra Leone and then a year here in Italy. So it was all back and forth till about 17. Till I was about 17 years old. My father came over to Italy in the 60s when it was still possible to, uh, to move over to Europe without having to risk your life. In the 60s, we had this, here in Florence in particular, there was this um, mayor. He was open to dialogue with, the, with, at the time you had the war in Vietnam, then you had the organization of African unity that was coming up, and then you had all the uh, African leaders. It was shortly after the end of colonialism in Africa, but it was, a, it was a time that was looking at the future in an open way, a future where you could welcome other people, other cultures, and I'm sure you had people like my mother who lived here, who met my father thanks to the dialogues which were organized by this mayor between university students from, from Africa and university students here in Italy because my dad came over to study architecture. So it was a, it was a, even though it was about, it was 50 years ago, more or less, more, 50, 60 years ago, it was totally different. And I don't know if you've noticed the kind of tension there is now here in Italy as well, not only as obviously in the States, we're talking about Black Lives Matter, but here in Italy, there's this tension that's been growing up. And instead of moving closer to other cultures, it seems as if we're trying to, we, uh, as in Italians, mostly white Italians, are trying to, you know, hold back and hold on to their whiteness. How have you seen that, that shift and change? I mean, growing up, what was your experience with watching this unfold, the progress, or lack thereof? So uh, there was obviously more curiosity. I did experience quite a few racist episodes. When I was like primary school, I remember when they would, even small things as in you had the kids saying that the boys would say who the pretty girls were, right? And so they would go from the prettiest to the less pretty. And I would, I, I did not even, I was not even part of it. I was not even considered a, a, a girl, you know? It's like you have 10 girls in, in the room and then Antonella is black, so she's totally out of it. So it seems, it's not, it's not about uh, being, it's about being uh, put aside and not considered as a human being. So that was like when you were growing up, I had like, um, all small things that were, would really, uh, I think, form your, form your character or anyway, uh, make you believe why am I, not, am I not being part of the, of the small community, of the class. Even though obviously I did have friends, I was, I, was, uh, I was popular in a way, as in I had friends and stuff, but I was always considered something else, you know, not a, not a girl or a boy, just an indefinite person. Growing up, I've had, uh, well, the worst one was uh, this lady about 10 years ago. She called me negra di merda, which is uh, like fucking nigger. I was with my, my daughter was about well, more than 10 years ago because my daughter was three years old then. And she called me that for no reason whatsoever. Just, I was translating for someone who had had like a, a small incident with the lady for this German girl, so she couldn't talk Italian. So I was, she was telling me in, 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 Germ, in English and I was translating. And, she, and, and this lady called me, this lady said the, the words I said before. And so I took her to court. It took me seven years 
But then she was, she was fined with paying for all the court expenses plus three months in jail. My brother was in, in, the, in a bus with my, with, my, with my mother and the lady sitting down told my mother, because my mother is white, blue eyes and everything. And the lady told my mom to be careful because there was, she said gypsy, she used the word zingaro because that's another discrimi discrimination here. They think all gypsies are, uh, are thieves. So she said, watch out talking about her son, uh, there's, there's this black guy behind you, he's a gypsy, he'll try to rob you. And you have all sorts, but every day you have uh, people who, they, 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 they treat black people as if they're, they're, um, they're kids, you know? So you have, for example, there's this um, uh, Idris, which, is a, which was a Senegalese uh, man, 56 year old man, who was shot and killed in Florence, uh, about uh, four years ago. When referring to him, they say the boy, the boy who was killed on the bridge. They would never say boy, especially in the Italian language. In English, it's different, but you do have a formal way of referring to people who are older than you, or anyway, who are over 18. You know, it's not only you, it's lay instead of tu. You have a different way of talking. So this man who was, I'm not saying he was an elderly man, but he was 56, there is no way you can refer to him as a boy. Even people who, who are uh, political activists, who fight for, the, for civil rights, who are not, I, I, I suppose, who are not racist, it's, it's a cultural thing. When talking about black people, they're boys. No matter if they're 90 year old or 40 year old, they refer to them as boys. We really need to do a cultural a revolution here in Italy. We say the same thing in the U.S. because the, the system was built to implement a certain way of speaking and thinking that has infected the culture, you know, and Definitely. so that needs to be eradicated. You were somewhat, you, you tried to run for mayor. You did not win that election, but you do sit on the city council. In Florence, it would have been some of the major challenges for you as, as, a, as a black woman fighting this. I, I was the first black uh, woman running for mayor in a, in a big town in Italy. Gender-wise as well, I was the only uh, one running for mayor. It was nine candidates. I was the only woman. And statistically as well, I, w I am the only, let's say, non-white person sitting in the city council. And you, out of 38 people sitting in the city council, there's just one. While if we look at uh, statistics, you have like in the, in the jail here, in the city jail here in, uh, in Italy, over 60% of the people, of the uh, convicts, you say, of, of, the, of the prisoners are of Afro-descendants. There is, there is a great problem of being represented. As a, as a black woman running for mayor here in Italy, by the way, I didn't win, but we, we, we were the third political force to win, so I didn't win, but I mean, we did, we did well. The, the challenges I had, actually, I didn't have too many uh, issues on race, but I must say the questions they asked me, because as I was running for mayor, as um, I've lived here for, for decades, they were mainly interested in my in uh, in asking me about racial issues which is which is fine now if we're talking about activism we're talking about what's going on in black lives matter but i suppose when i was running for mayor i could um obviously i i could have given my views on more issues not just in this one do you think there were there were there's sexist issues Considering you were the woman, the woman who ran in, among you know almost ten other candidates, yes. you know yes. what the resistance is to having a woman lead as as a mayor. Yes, exactly. Exactly. There's never been there's never been a female mayor here here in Italy here in Florence. Sorry, not in Italy. Combining the two, black and woman, it, it was kind of a challenge. I, I must say, we are still even within the city council. You have especially the right-wing forces, they actually always, um, they have acts saying um, there's no discrimination, there's no gender discrimination, feminicide, you know, violence, gender, gender gen, generated violence, sure. and they're always trying to minimize in the 70s, in the early 70s, that the, the law stating that if someone, uh, if a man rapes you, instead of going to jail, 
he could he couldn't marry you and then and then everything will be settled so it's only a few decades ago but we still have this even in the in in the center of, of italy even in the north we still do have this uh, discrimination against uh, against women the sad thing is that most women as well believe even even though they're more educated and everything we have a huge gap in salary but here you uh, there was there's this sociologist who came over in the city council just uh, last week with all the statistics and even though women are more educated as in they've studied more in italy and they get paid less but they they believe they need to be paid less so that's not the first thing they ask when they go and look for an occupation for a job so we, we really do have to do there's a huge uh, amount of work we have to do uh, firstly obviously with laws but also with trying to study trying trying to study more because before we were talking about now we talk about gender but also talking about racism talking about the position italy had at the beginning of the of of, of the 20th century where we, 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 we're not considering colonialism, we're not considering fascism. It's as if at the end of an era, um, then we, we, we turn the page over without trying to understand what was going on, without trying to elaborate what happened in order to be able to move forward. And when we try to uh, bring these issues, it's almost as if people don't want to talk about it because talking about these issues seem as if uh, you are accusing someone and uh, i think that's the main problem we have here in italy and that's the peculiarity we have compared to compared to other countries even germany that that's the main problem here in italy we we start off saying the italians are italiani brava gente that's the that's the saying you know so italians are good people and if we don't try to understand the past try to study the past we don't know our past here in Italy, so obviously it's very difficult to move forward. So let's talk about moving forward. What currently is the issue you feel you're most passionate about working on? Now, I think the most important thing, and I, I hope it'll be in the next weeks, because actually they, they are discussing it in Parliament, although it's not going in the right direction, to my opinion. And that's uh, to cancel, totally cancel the so we say safety laws that were put in place uh, by the previous government, which have to do with civil rights on the whole. So it's not just gender, it's not just racial issues, it's uh, the uh, workers' rights, it's, it's just about everything. There's no, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make you uh, free to demonstrate, to go out in the streets and say what's not going on, to be able to, to make your voice heard. Here in Tuscany, uh, in Prato, which is close to Florence, there's this town where you had um, 19 workers plus two students, which were fined with 4,000 4, euros each a few months ago uh, because they were demonstrating outside of the working place because they've been working for seven months without pay. After seven months, they decided to, um, to demonstrate. And so they, out, outside of their working place, the police came, identified them, plus this, these other two, two students who were just there in solidarity, and fined each and every one of them with 4,000 euros. This was about four months ago. They still haven't been paid for the seven months. Uh, they, they hadn't been paid for. The, the, the owners of the place where they were working for are still working. So they haven't locked the place down. In 2018, we had a new law on, on migration, not only on, not only on migration, even on people residing here in Italy, even on, let's say, new Italians, which totally undermine what the Italian constitution says, that there should be no obstacle referring to gender or religion or race. The difference was that before you would experience maybe the same kind of racism but it wasn't legal now you have laws where let's say you have certain crimes that are committed in uh, in certain hideous crimes that are committed if they're committed by italians that were born italians they have a set of law if they were committed by italians that became italians at a later stage that is they were not born italians 
their Italian citizenship can be taken away from them. You have laws fining people for um, saving people drowning in the Mediterranean Sea. The NGOs operating in the Mediterranean Sea are fined for saving people who are on like makeshift boats in the Mediterranean. And we know the Mediterranean is like the largest cemetery for people who try to migrate. There are no humanitarian corridors. There is no way you can come. It's very difficult to come with a scholarship. And there is no way the politicians will sit down and find a way to be able to control migration. You only have, they only have two ways. They pretend that they uh, don't see peop people, so the people are invisible. And another way, they do everything they can to push them into, into being uh, illegal. Um, even internationally, they've said Libya is not a safe country, but we still allow them to go back, uh, to take them back. It was only a few days ago where the, the, the Coast Guard, the Libyan Coast Guard, shot and killed uh, two migrants who were taken back from trying to cross the Mediterranean. They were given back to the Libyan Coast Guard and they were shot and killed. So we know exactly what's going on. The, the government is paying for people to be yes. sent back to Libya. Yes, uh, officially. So it's not like it's, uh, they're paying them undercover. Uh, they've, they've renewed the agreement to pay, uh, that they're paying Libya to do this. Unfortunately, the scapegoats are uh, migrants. So there's no way people can come legally. And if they try to come illegally and they don't die in the Mediterranean, they're sent back to Libya. And we pay people to keep them there. It's all something totally inhuman. So we think the, the first thing to do is uh, to abolish the uh, safety decrees, the so-called safety decrees, to uh, interrupt any uh, legal negotiation with, with Libya, to talk about the one million Italians who are pre Italians, they're not legally Italians, but people who were born in Italy, who've always lived in Italy, who do not have the Italian citizenship. What do you want to see for women in Italy? You've talked a lot about just referring to the fact that, you know, there's, you know, and, and, and certainly like every, every woman I've talked to, every woman from Rome to Florence that I've talked to continues to bring up the need for there to be the cultural revolution for women. There needs, definitely there needs to be more representation. Yesterday, for example, in Puglia, uh, which is down south, a region down south in Italy, they didn't pass a law saying that you had to have equal representation in the, in the regional uh, government. It, it was yesterday, two, 2020, and you have people voting against this. So uh, until there is equal representation, as in politically, where you can actually act and make laws until then, we have to fight for this right. We have to actually fight. The first thing is for representation in all works of life. You have people discussing issues relating to women, and the people who are called to talk about gender issues are mainly middle-aged white men. One of the things that struck me about Antonella's story and her words was how often women have been gaslighted to believe that they weren't deservant of their own equality, that they needed to accept the status quo for which they had been given, and that it's an internal wound that goes quite deep. Her words and her story inspired me and are very much worth considering. I will put ways to follow her in the description box below. I encourage you to check out her work, her posts, her activism. For now, I'll leave you there. May you live and move and have your being. Cheers. <laughs>